Turning now to the bloodshed in eastern Ukraine. Heavy shelling has hit the region as government troops and pro-Russian rebels report new casualties. At least 15 people were killed in the worst fighting in weeks. Several buildings, including an elementary school, were damaged. The war between government troops and rebels has killed almost 10,000 people since it began in 2014. Joining me now with more on this and the most recent news this morning with those sanctions against Russia imposed by the U.S. is Arl Braun. He's a professor of international relations and political science at the University of Toronto. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Let's start by talking about these sanctions that we're just learning about this morning. Isn't this just going to increase tensions between Iran and the United States? Well, this is assuming that there were no tensions to begin with. And what has happened is that in the past year and a half, Iran has been prodding and probing. They have supported a variety of proxies, the Houthis in Yemen. The Houthis, for example, have fired on Saudi ships, on those of the United Arab Emirates. And there was no response from the Obama administration because they were so intent on protecting the nuclear agreement. The deal in 2015. Uh, the, The deal in 2015. But uh, the kind of test that the Iranians have been engaging in, these uh, uh, short-range and medium-range missiles, these are capable of carrying nuclear weapons. And when you look at uh, a nuclear capability, it is not only the explosive bomb, but it is also the delivery system. And the Iranians have been rushing full ahead to develop these delivery systems. So the new administration, administration is saying to them, this is a violation of an agreement that you are not going to deliver or or develop these delivery systems. You have been doing it, and we are sending you a very clear message that there's a cost to that. So are they testing the new presidency then? In a sense, one might say that they were overreaching. Mm. They had such a tremendously advantageous deal that they got uh, with President Obama. This was a deal that transferred and allowed the lifting of sanctions of a huge amount of money. It uh, did not force the closing down of the Ford plant. The inspection regime is relatively restricted. So even if they abided by the agreement, they could still develop the technology. They could still do testing in terms of delivery systems unless they actually use ballistic missiles. So they were pushing the envelope. And at the moment, I think they may have pushed it a bit too far. They received a signal. It's a warning. So in a sense, it's up to the Iranians to say, are we going to pull back a little bit? They have also been very active in Syria. When we look at these vast numbers of refugees from Syria, this is because of the war. And Bashar al-Assad would not like to be in power were it not for the support of the Iranian government and the proxy Hezbollah. So where does this leave Russia and Vladimir Putin? Because Donald Trump seems to have soft language when it comes to dealing with Russia and and almost an admiration for President Vladimir Putin. How does this, how does Russia factor? It's a very interesting question because here you start with an American administration that basically has been sending very positive messages Mm -hmm. to Russia that we could have a good relationship, that we could even partner in fighting terrorism. And then you have these incidents in Ukraine, which again are pushing the envelope. Mm -hmm. And the question is, is it an overreach? And the Trump administration has sent out mixed signals. So it's very curious that when you look at the State Department, the response was very muted. They said that they uh, are very deeply concerned by these actions, but they did not even name Russia. Then you look at the United Nations, and Nikki Haley Haley, makes a very tough statement. So it is both a promise and a warning, saying to the Russians, you can have good relations but don't overplay your hand. And this is the danger. Is Vladimir Putin overplaying his hand? Last question then. Do you feel that Russia has been emboldened by Donald Trump? And is that why we're seeing an escalation of violence again in eastern Ukraine? I think the evidence points in that direction. There's always a possibility that the rebel forces acted on their own, but that would tell us that there is a problem with the command structure, and that would be very bad also, because Moscow then is being loose control. I'm skeptical of that theory, and there is that theory out there. It is more than likely that Vladimir Putin wanted to see if he could push the Trump administration. I think it's a risky enterprise. It can backfire. And if there is a 
deterioration of relations between Russia and United States, we should remember that the American economy is eight times that of Russia's. And the United States has many more cards than Russia has. All right, we'll leave it there for today. Oral Braun, always great to have you with us. Thanks so much for your insight. Thank you.